Okay, Billy, nasılsın? Ee, i̇yi, teşekkür ederim. Sen nasılsın? Teşekkür ederim, ben de çok iyiyim. Ee, nasıl buldun kanı bu sene? Kan? Yavaş yavaş, çocuk gibi. Çocuk gibi yavaş yavaş. Çok şükür. Türkçe o, konuşuyorsun. Biraz konuşuyorum. Unuttum. Konuş. Unuttum. Ne dedim bana? Praktik. Praktik yeah, lazım. Praktik yoksa. Okay, boy. Uh, I'm gonna ask you a question. You know. Could you please explain what's the story behind your Turkish language? Well, um, how did you learn to speak Turkish? Beş sene, beş sene uh, hapsane yaptım. You can speak in, in Or, English orindum, if you want. That's the end of my <laughs> I was in Turkish prison for five years in Istanbul from 1970 to 1975. And of course I learned to speak Turkish then. I don't speak it well, but I was able to converse with people. Okay, you know, we know that right. story. Could you please explain how it happened, you know? Well, Everybody knows that also you are a very important person for Turkish community for some reason. That, uh, but, you know, I want to learn something uh, the truth about. I was in Istanbul and you know, it was the 1970s and uh, I was smoking hash and I was smuggling hash. Uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time and I take this hash under my arms and I was arrested at the airport. They weren't looking for hash. It was when the beginning of all of this airport security, the, uh, yeah. the PLO had first hijacked the jets in Libya and blown up the two Pan Am jets. And that started all of the airport security. Before that, no one searched to get it on an airplane. So they were searching people at the airport and they separated all of the people and put us on a bus and drove us out to the airplane and took us off the plane and searched people. And when the guards, they hit this hash under my arms, he was thinking, bamba bamba, and everyone froze and they opened their guns and it was like, <laughs> and then he lifted up my shirt and he looked and he said, Esbal, oh, and they were all happy. Esbal, Esbal. They were all happy. All except me, because down. And for the next five years, I was in prison. And then I got very desperate and very lucky, actually. And I got transferred to Imrali Island Prison, where uh, Mr. Ojalan is now yeah. all by himself, the only prisoner. Yeah. And I was able to escape off Imrali in uh, a little um, island boat. No, uh, the small boat. What they call it? Sandal. 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 Yeah. The fishing. The made, handmade sandal. Yes. All the fishing boats that would come into the island to bring produce, because it was a work island. We we produced fruits and vegetables. Hmm. Each of the fishing boats had a little sandal behind them. So one, but they don't stay in the harbor at night because it's a prison island. They always leave. But one day I noticed there was a storm coming, and these boats were coming into the harbor to spend the night. And I thought. If I can get out to the little sun, because I'm a swimmer, so I was a mm. lightweight. Uh, but then I can somehow get off the island. Actually, I was sitting up on the grave of Menderes. Menderes is buried on Amrali yeah. Island. I was sitting up on Menderes's grave, right there, looking down at the harbor. And I thought, I yeah. one of these boats. And then a few months later, a big storm came, and I was able to swim out to the boat, and then row over to, uh, I think it's Bandirma, somewhere near Bandirma. Bandirma. Yeah and then worked my way back up to Istanbul, where I had a friend who I thought was going to hide me, but he wasn't there, so I dyed my hair, and I was running and hiding, and eventually I made my way over to, um, where's my mind? The, to the Greek border, the, the big town on, on the Greek border, uh, Adrianopolis on the Greek side, what's it called? The big border, uh, and I forget the name, but it's the, the big border town, one of the big border crossings. Chanakkale? Uh, no, uh, north of that, up, up further north. Um, I forget, but I'll see it on okay. the map. Okay. And then I was able to go down even further, down past a town called uh, Karakashi, a small village. Karakashi. And then out into the open wild country, and eventually cross, to swim the river, the, uh, the Maritas, Maritas River, yeah. across to into Greece to escape. Then you escape. Anyway, yeah, your story sounds like you know the 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 the, the sounds like behind a Hollywood the film. The Hollywood <laughs> film, okay. And then you wrote a book, right? And uh, the book that you wrote was the same in the Midnight Express, or you know, Hollywood Stone did he change? You know, the, some it, part. It was different. The book Midnight Express is my story. It's yeah, you know. Some people in Turkey weren't happy with the book, but not, not so much because it, it was what happened to me, that's it. Yeah. Then the movie came. Oliver Stone wrote the script. I think he put a lot of his 
you know, he was angry and he had platoon he hadn't made yet and mm. all of his Vietnam stuff. A lot of that came into the movie, which was all right because as outsiders, people have their impression of what a prison is like. Whether it's Turkey or Iran or America or anywhere else, prison's bad. And from the outside, everybody thinks what prison is. And I think that kind of influenced how they made their movie. What, again, as I mentioned to you, the thing I, my problem with the movie is that there are no good Turks in it. All the Turks in Midnight Express are bad. Yeah, I was just asking you because you mentioned to me a couple of days ago, you had a couple of Turkish friends, of good friends. I had good Turkish and friends. And you were worried about, you didn't see them in the movie, you know. You don't see any good Turks in the movie. They're all, it's all very uh, one-dimensional characters, like caricature yeah. of the Turks. Yeah. So the impression that everybody got from seeing Midnight Express is that all Turks are like this. And yeah, the reason why that movie, you know, it in, hurt the country. Yeah, it hurt, hurt the country. Yeah. And I feel for that because, again, I liked the Turks. I had Turkish friends. I learned to speak the language. Boyram, Iram, you know, Nasazi. I felt bad because that's everybody said, oh, all the Turks. I said, no, no. Prison? Yes. Prison guard. But even the prison guards. In the prison, there was one guard who was a sadist. One guard who was, he liked to hurt people, he liked to frighten people. Most of the guards were nice guys, doing a very hard job under very dangerous circumstances, making no money, trying to support their families, and getting paid very little, which was which is why they were so open to bakshish and bribes, because they were making no money. But not all the guards were brutal. In fact, most of them weren't. But that's the impression that everyone got. And yeah. I feel bad for that. I know Turkey did because it affected them. But also for me, because it put the, cr the criticism of the movie. They said, this movie isn't true. Well. No, actually it is. The prison system is very bad. I have problems with the legal system too. I don't think people should be arrested for marijuana. But that's the same in the United States or anywhere. That's my own personal issue. Yeah. But they all said, well, because all the Turks in this movie are one-dimensional, none of the movie is true. So it constantly, I had to constantly be talking about that. I wish it hadn't happened. I wish they'd shown some good Turks and a balance to it. Maybe some of the lawyers being much more humane. Yeah. It would have created a different overall impression of what Turkey was. And it would have been better for Turkey and better for me. Yeah. For both of them.